This evening we, we launched the start of our 20th anniversary exhibition, Camus, Clough and Counterculture, which is a, a record of what philosophy football has done since October 1994. Fidel Castro's brother spies a rich lady who's crying over the luxury... And we've been able to present 48 of our shirts from the 570 we've produced over that time. We hope we put together an interesting collection, a themed collection, and uh, we're looking forward to further exhibitions in the future. Yeah, 20 years ago we started off with a shirt from Albert Camus, which combined football and philosophy. He was a Nobel Prize winning goalkeeping author. I first noticed philosophy football when I saw the great Albert Camus shirt advertised in The Guardian, which is over there. Uh, I didn't know that Camus was even a footballer, still less that football meant so much to his life. And I thought, who is producing a, sh a football shirt with Camus on it? I think that one was a kind of anchor slogan, and it linked, if you like, uh, the products of high culture with a kind of accessibility to, to a, broader, a broader public, a broader community. Um, if you like, capitalising on the interest in football as, uh, as popular culture, and also its relevance uh, to the study which had been ignored by, if you like, traditional high culture. This combination of a, a philosopher talking about football, you know, a former player, goalkeeper for the University of Algiers, Nobel Prize winner, this, this link we had between football and philosophy, before we knew it we realised we'd struck a really rich vein, that there were many thinkers who used football as a, as a metaphor and many players who came out with interesting quotes about football, not the sort of quotes you would normally get. So having done the first shirt and found that to be successful, we found we had a vast number of potential quotes that we could use. I think it's partly because at first it's the incongruity of um, a, a very sort of intellectual person making a statement about football is all about morality. Uh, and then when you start to read Camus or uh, a, you know, a, a historian, maybe even Eric Hobsbawm, you see references to football and then you sort of understand the role of football. But the way in which it does it is, uh, is very stylish, I think, and um, too much on the left, we sort of suffer from a lot of, um, uh, you know, sort of windbaggery where you're kind of banging on about things in a, uh, in a way which maybe only uh, political research assistants understand. But philosophy football hits the nail on the head with one quote, uh, one line, and it does so in a way which you know, can be far more effective than um, a great tome, an academic tome, or even a political party leaflet. And philosophy football has been one of the fantastic strands in the tapestry of modern English football culture that has brought reflection, humour, wit, social context and a real love of the game and also allowed us to wear a bunch of funky t-shirts. So if that's not worth celebrating after all the neoliberal commercial pack we've had to put up with the last 20 years, I don't know what is. You are really wearing your heart on your sleeve when you're wearing a philosophy football t-shirt um, and the Guardian readership is exactly the sort of vocal audience that um, does exactly that. I agree with the ethos which is to um, take football out of a ghetto which it was in for many, many years. Um, and that ghetto was a kind of a, a sort of intellectual ghetto. It was felt that um, football and culture were mutually exclusive. Um, but as philosophy football has shown, the opposite is the case. And um, even if you just take a quote from a philosopher or uh, a football manager, and um, you can see, you know, whether it's Bill Shankly or, or Camus, you can see that football is a lot wider uh, than just 22 players on a pitch kicking a ball around. It's also fantastic to have an alternative to wearing a, uh, you know, a replica shirt, which has become the de facto thing that you wear at the football these days. And it's just so good that there's an alternative that you can still express your love, not just for your club, but for the whole wider culture of football. That's what I really love about it, saying, I don't just love Tottenham or I don't just love Bristol. I love football and I love all the people who are part of that culture because it's one of those rare and precious things that is left in an atomised society which is about us, not me. And what I like in uh, philosophy football, that's the, a mix of uh, sports, 
culture, a little bit of subversion. And that's a rich mix. So maybe that's because we are here at the rich mix. But for me, it's a rich, very rich mix. It began in 1994, quite an interesting time for football. Football was being uh, metamorphosed, if you like, since the Italian 90 World Cup, uh, in which England did pretty well, best they'd done since 1966. Suddenly football became more fashionable. The Premier League began in 1992. Uh, books, programmes, all sorts of things were happening at the time that we were developing. Our own name was similar to uh, fantasy football, which at the time was a very popular television series. So things were bubbling up in football. It was a time of change. We were trying to get beyond the 80s. The late 80s was a time of terrible football disasters. All the news was bad, terrible deaths, that sort of thing. But the fanzine culture covered a lot of that. But by the 1990s, things had evolved further. And philosophy football rode that wave, if you like. I think the whole world's been waiting for people who can take the spirit of the times and the big questions and turn it into something that you can stick on a t-shirt. The problem is, we're surrounded by hundreds of advertising messages a day that tell us, first and foremost, we are purely defined by what we consume. What philosophy football does is turn it around and put into what you can get onto a t-shirt the great questions of our times. And that, my friend, is a great skill and one we need a lot more of. Yeah, for the first five years I'd say we had our hands full we had so many football quotes and uh, quotes from philosophers that uh, we found that we could produce as many shirts as we wanted and for five years that was perfectly satisfying yet after about five years of working on philosophy and football shirts we realized there was far more that we perhaps could do that we were experienced by then there were things going on around us and we could offer our services to other organizations while retaining our independence and for us, that gave us a great boost because uh, many organisations could do with the kind of help that we've got. And issues were coming up that we thought we could contribute to. In 1999, we saw the dot-com boom come and go. In 2003, the Iraq war disaster meant that we could involve ourselves in that. By 2008, there was a Western European, Western world financial collapse. We moved into all of those areas and working with other organisations, we've campaigned on many different subjects, anti-racism, anti-capitalism. Philosophy Football, have, uh, you know, they've always created these really powerful, strong brands around different campaigns, whether it's Hope Not Hate, whether it's uh, Viva Palestina, whether it's the kind of Gaza campaign, all sorts of things. And look, you know, unfortunately on the left, you know, sometimes we're fighting like cats in a bag. And actually the one thing they manage to do, whether it's at festivals, whether it's at parties, whether it's through the same designs of t-shirts that people wear, is actually bring people together, collect a sense of a collective sense of unity, identity, and actually that's important. You know, when you see people wearing their, their sports gear, when you actually see them with those emblems, that have powerful political messages, you know, that for me is a, a unifying uh, factor that philosophy football should be very proud of. Down here, you'll probably see it uh, when you do a uh, panning shot later. There's loads and loads of banners around, right? One which is missing is a gigantic banner for Viva Palestina. There's a good reason why it's missing. It's flying now on the side of the town hall in Khan Yunis, in Gaza City, provided that is that the Israelis haven't blown it up. If that's not happened, it'll still be there, because me and Hugh put it there when we took it all the way to Gaza. So that's what philosophy of football means to me. By 2006, we were invited to do a shirt for the, uh, to mark the uh, anniversary of the Spanish Civil War. We produced a series of shirts about the Spanish Civil War. I've always had a big interest in history. And there are many, many subjects from the past that we think are perhaps uh, underrepresented now. Part of our role is almost an educational role, if you like. We see symbols from the past which we think are worth dusting off and presenting in the present. That's not to say we're not interested in issues now. But alongside campaigning about today's issues, we see a need and a role in just reminding people of some of the sacrifices and achievements of the past. They've done some fantastic t-shirts, not just for us, but for all these great campaigns that we've been involved in together over the past couple of decades. I mean, I've seen t-shirts that Philosophy Football have done about the International Brigade. I've seen them on TV in Spain with people I didn't know wearing them. 
you see you now you go to dem demos and we see their t-shirts all over the place so and there's a kind of signature to them uh, they I mean they they the design is clean simple they get the message across something that the whole left and labor movement should learn from I think to begin with we found we'd struck a rich seam with football and philosophy we found the same thing happen with history that suddenly there was this vast archive of material we find obscure things perhaps that people hadn't seen and convert those into a design suitable for a t-shirt it might be the size of a button, the original, or a tiny badge. From that, we can, uh, we can convert that into a, a chest-sized T-shirt image for silkscreen printing. It's a wonderful opportunity for us. It's the 10th anniversary of Hope Not Hate this year. They've been going half the time we have. We were invited to contribute early on to that organisation. We named the organisation, gave them their identity of a sun image. The International Brigade Memorial Trust are here through Jim Jump. Uh, we work with Red Pepper. The philosophy of football is really, you know, it's really stylish, it's really uh, witty, uh, it's really confident. I think, you know, that idea that the left has every reason to be, to be confident. Okay, we've been through serious defeats at the hands of Thatcher, but, I mean, actually, you know, we've got a clear alternative vision. Many, many trade unions, toll puddle, uh, numerous organisations actually over the years, kick it out, as many of those people as possible we hope will be coming tonight. We produce silk screen printed t-shirts, so we, we in fact you could say we were publishers, we don't print the shirts ourselves, we are indebted to our printers, Fifth Column and Transformer, who for 20 years have produced wonderful work for us and without them we wouldn't be here. We go back a long way with Philosophy Football, it's been a great relationship and I can actually say that I am proudly remember printing the first run of Camus t-shirts, um, 20 I think it was, printed them by hand on a manual carousel and at the time thought, wow, this is a good idea and uh, over the years I've really enjoyed watching the development, um, many brilliant design shoes done and really the, um, the ethos and the feeling behind them. They're more, more than just t-shirts. The message and the undying purpose behind it has really impressed me over the years. So I'm very proud to be here to wish them all a very happy birthday. I should say for 10 years now, we've, alongside producing shirts, we put on two or three events a year. We want to try and get beyond the conventional political meeting of a, a podium with speakers faced by ranks of seats. Our events have poetry and film and music and uh, we try to make them perhaps more entertaining. We mix the polemic with uh, some fun and we've had a lot of success doing that, including uh, jugglers, bands, brass bands, rappers. We think it's all grist to the mill. It gets beyond the silent process of producing T-shirts. And it's good that they have really good music like this, by the way. You know, they're into good, cult good public culture, good bit of politics, and uh, a bit of football as well, which is part of public culture. People's game. Right. I saw Billy Bragg um, talking at once in some good bands. I saw a fantastic one where they had a lot of um, American screen print company came over and brought all their posters and I uh, brought a beautiful Clash poster from uh, a gig in America which I have proudly uh, framed and on my wall. Uh, silk screen printing is uh, of a big interest to me. So. If you put the entire bill together from our events it would be a catalogue of uh, recent top quality acts and some of the finest orators. We're very proud to have been able to put on these events with so many really good speakers. I certainly consider producing t-shirts is, a, for, is a, a form of art, artistic production, yeah. One thing I like about the t-shirt is it's democratic, it's very, very cheap, it's just, it has no intrinsic value. You can join our movement or, or our uh, organisation, if you like, simply at the cost of a £20 t-shirt. We try and keep the price of membership, if you like, as low as we possibly can. There's nothing exclusive about the philosophy of football. We are after the widest possible inclusion. And the t-shirt gives us that medium. It's very cheap, cheerful, and uh, we're not going to stop doing it. But there's still one or two in this exhibition that I'm very pleased with. I mean, the camo shirt to begin with, the very first one that kicked it off is very significant. But the themes that we've shown here of philosophy, football, campaigning, dissent, other sport and culture, war, there are shirts in all of those categories, which I like for different reasons. Some because they were very popular, 
and they were proven by the customers to be successful. Others, I simply wanted to make a statement about those particular subjects. But there's a one shirt in here that was produced days after the 2009 Israeli attack on Gaza, and its, uh, its genesis was that I was on the demonstration myself. I saw a person with a hand-drawn cardboard placard with a statement saying they stole our land, they burned our olive trees, they killed my mother, they imprisoned my father, they took my job, this long catalogue, and all because we fired a rocket. And I, I took that, developed it slightly, produced the type in the colours of the Palestinian flag. It was massively successful, that shirt. And the large-scale sales of that shirt allowed us to uh, produce vehicle graphics and T-shirts for two convoys, three overland convoys to Gaza in the next 18 months. So yeah, different shirts have different uh, meanings for me. You know, these t-shirts which uh, shine a light on the philosophical uh, aspects of our world. How can we all coexist? How can we try and create a world which is more fair, which is more equal, which is more just through the people's game? Well, for me, designing things is not just a nine to five occupation. It's a way of life. And if our designs can make a tiny, tiny difference, they are worth doing. And if we can force that difference to be a little bit bigger by contributing other things, by participating in convoys, by participating in demonstrations and other movements, then that to me is a justification for what we do. We are not simply t-shirt sellers. There are many of those people about. I wish them all success, but our participation is broader than deeper than that. Revolution!